Why is the 10,000 hour rule wrong and what should you do instead? Let's talk about that while we have fun drawing ribbons in our sketchbook. So why don't you grab your sketchbook and draw along with me? You can see some helpful tips in boxes on the left side. Do you have your sketchbook and pencil or pen? Great. Maybe you dream of becoming a paid artist or maybe you dream of becoming a paid writer. You hate your current job and you long for that lifestyle where you can spend your entire days doing that and making a living with it. What if you could make a living writing novels? What if you could make a living drawing comics? Or what if you could sell your screenplays for seven figure sums? That would be a life of bliss. And so you start. You draw a webcomic or maybe you write a screenplay and it is a struggle. And it is a grind. Your work doesn't seem to find an audience. Publishers you send your work to reject your work. And then you hear about the 10,000 hour rule, which Malcolm Gladwell came up with. And it sounds so obvious, so true. The rule states that you have to practice something for 10,000 hours before you can become good at it. And it rings so true. Of course it works that way. Don't you have to practice playing music instruments really hard to become good at making music? And so you double down on the grind. You double down on practicing. As an artist, you practice anatomy, you practice drawing boxes, you practice perspective, and you endlessly practice drawing heads and hands. And it is a chore. You have to force yourself to start drawing every day. It does not feel like fun. It feels like a workout. And there is no reward at the end of it. No nice drawing. And you don't make it to 10,000 hours that way. The people who became a success in their fields most likely did spend 10,000 hours creating before they became good at it, but they were not counting the hours. And from the outside, it might look that way, but they were not forcing themselves to practice hard. Are you drawing along with me? These ribbons are fun to draw when you get the hang of it. My father taught me to program when I was 10, and I sold my first computer game when I was 14. I have been programming for a long time now and I have done it for much longer than 10,000 hours and I like to think I became good at it. And here is what it was like. I became fascinated with seeing computers do things, with seeing things change and move on a computer screen. I saw computer games and I wanted to learn how to make them, how to make these colorful movements happen on a screen. And so I set about making them. I would type over games from a magazine because that is how they were distributed back then. And from that I learned how it worked. You listened to you user input from the keyboard, you advanced the game state and you redrew the screen. So now I understood, I lost interest with it. But later I became similarly interested in other things programming related. How do you make your own computer language? And I made one. And how do you make a 3D engine? And I made one. Programming was an obsession, an addiction for years. I would forget to eat, sleep, shower and I spent every waking hour programming. I eventually ended up in an eight hour day programming job and then I would continue to program until deep in the night when I came home. But I was not practicing hard and trying to make the 10,000 hours. Instead, I saw something computer related that I found fascinating and amazing and I wanted to understand it and figure out how I could make something like it. I was having fun and trying to figure out how to make certain cool things happen on a screen. The 10,000 hours just happened by accident as I was having fun programming. I hope you are having fun drawing ribbons with me. Are you managing to make them sway on the page? It is satisfying, isn't it? If you read books and you find yourself incredibly moved by a story and you find that you are completely enamored with and struck by the absolute and poetic beauty and musicality of a perfectly crafted sentence or poem, you might start writing because you want to create similar to sentences of beauty. And then you read great authors and you analyze and you try again. As a young kid, Maybe you heard rock music you completely fell in love with and you pick up the guitar and you play many hours trying to get that same effect from your guitar. Sure, you also practice chords, you learn to read music, but the thing that drives you is figuring out how to create that sound you fell in love with so much. Or maybe you fell in love with comics at a young age and maybe you spent countless hours trying to draw the superheroes you saw in them and maybe you started making your own comics trying to recreate that particular expression of that medium you fell in love with. You were not practicing hard, you were not counting down from 10,000. That is not how it works. That is not how you become good at your craft. That is not how you become successful in a field. You fall in love with the poetic beauty of some specific form of human expression and you are fascinated by it and you want to recreate such beauty yourself. And you first copy what you admire until you understand how to and then you make it your own. You are driven by curiosity 
and it feels like a game. Each time you fail, that game over feel feels like you're failing. You want to try one more time and you try again and again and again, each time thinking, now I know what I did wrong. This time I will get it right. And each time you do manage to pull something off for the first time, no matter how small, it feels incredibly rewarding, like you beat the level boss and want to try the next level, the next challenge. And it feels like fun. It feels like playing a game, like being challenged constantly and you are rewarded constantly each time you manage to create a little something that blows your mind. And you are not counting the hours. You, you are not trying to make it to 10,000 hours. You are just having fun. You are following your own curiosity about how to make something that completely blows you away. Imagine now that someone else also starts doing what you are doing, but they do it because they imagine that it could be a nice way to make a living. Or maybe they do it for the perceived status they think it provides. They want to say they are a published author, for example. They try, they maybe write their first novel or screenplay, or maybe they try their hand at comics. They make something and it is not received well because they are beginners. They are not good yet, so they try to figure out how to become better and they found, find out about this theory of practicing hard for 10,000 hours before you become a master. And so they set out on that journey. They practice and they practice. They are not having fun though. They are people who say, I hate writing, but I love having written. Now, imagine who they are up against. They are up against you. You eat, sleep and breathe the subject. You are, have completely fallen in love with works in the medium and you try to recreate aspects of it every day. Each day, you can't wait to jump out of bed and continue where you left off yesterday. You got stuck on a problem yesterday, but this morning you woke up with the solution. You return to your desk and you work for an hour or two. You finish it and you have this little victory, this little moment of celebration because you did it. If you have been writing this way for a decade, completely in love with the process of writing and the po poetic beauty of good writing, and if you are therefore actually good at crafting good stories and sentences, what chance do, does a newcomer have against you if they are just doing it for the money or perceived status? How will they learn to craft good sentences and great stories if they hate every minute of the activity? And if they hate writing but love having written? How will their screenplay compare to yours? Will a film production company invest their money in that other script that the writer forced themselves to write? Possibly writing what they thought the market wanted because they want to sell it? Or will the production company be more likely to sink their money into your script, which is original and fresh and written with passion and great skill? If you are addicted to writing and completely in love with good writing, will a publisher be more likely to publish your novel or a novel by someone who has just started writing because they dream of being able to say one day that they are a published author, even though they don't care much about writing? I realize that this may come over as harsh to some people and not everyone will want to hear this, but not you, of course, you are on your path of passion. And my point is that the people who are not cannot possibly compete against you. The same is true for any human act of creation. If you want to make music, literature, comics, art, computer programs, anything really, you want to choose something where you have fallen utterly in love with the examples of expressions in these art forms. You want to find out how to do that yourself also. And you want to find a way to make the activity fun. And then you will make your 10,000 hours, then 20,000 hours, then 30,000 hours. That will almost be by accident as a side effect of you having fun and becoming better in the process. I read this somewhere. To become the noun, you have to do the verb. I would add to that that you have to make sure you enjoy doing the verb. People miss this crucial part of it. I hope you can see now why I think the 10,000 hour rule is a dangerous thing. It puts people on the wrong path in life. It gets them to put 10,000 hours of their lives into doing something they don't love doing. What kind of life is that? And they will fail because they will either not make it to 10,000 hours or they do not have the guiding compass that is so necessary. The examples they aim to copy. But not you, dear listener. You follow your passion, you follow your bliss. I am an artist and I struggled with keeping and maintaining a daily drawing habit for the longest time, until I started looking at the lessons I had learned from programming for so long. One aspect was in place. There were artists I admired and I wanted to be able to create like them. But when you draw, 
You always see all the mistakes when you're finished. This is less so with programming when, you co when your code works and beautiful colors move around on the screen the way you had intended to, you feel a sense of satisfaction. Not so with drawing. You see all the mistakes and you are robbed of this reward. So the next thing you naturally consider is practicing hard. You practice anatomy, you practice drawing hands, eyes, faces, you draw landscapes, practicing perspective, you practice drawing boxes. And your skill does improve, but the joy of the activity goes away. It's not as much fun anymore. And you don't make the pieces you set out to make in the first place. So I created my website, practice drawing this with the goal of offering a solution. There I am working on creating drawing exercises that help me become a much better artist while also being fun to do. And I try to make them so that they result in rewardingly beautiful drawings. The goal is to present drawing exercises, which you can just start doing, enjoy doing, and which then hopefully result in beautiful sketchbook pages. The drawing exercises are still works in progress. Some still lean too heavily on hard practice, but I improve on them every day and I hope you will consider having fun trying them out. This is my passion at the moment. The thing I am curious to find out. How do I make drawing exercises as seductively fun and addictive as programming has been for me? As fun and addictive as games can be? In that spirit, please do let me know if parts of the drawing exercises don't work for you. I really want to make them the best they can be for both you and for me. Do you think draw along videos like this one can work to make it more fun to draw? I hope you had fun drawing ribbons with me. It's surprisingly fun because you can draw them from imagination once you get the hang of them. And I think they look cool. Please also consider joining my newsletter to not miss any additions I made to my drawing exercises. Thank you for watching and listening.